Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Praise the Lord, and welcome to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are excited to welcome you to our morning worship service here at Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. On behalf of our pastor, District Elder George Twilley Sr., First Lady Lynette Twilley, and the entire Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries family, again, we welcome you to today's service. Thank you for taking time to join our program today. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, please do us a favor and share today's service. Subscribe to our pages so that you can stay up to date with our media ministry and know what's happening at Faith, Hope, and Charity. Again, we welcome you to today's service and we are ready to worship the Lord together. As we begin our morning service, we're going to read scripture for this morning, which will come from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. And it reads, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. We're certainly going to remember to pray for all of those who are impacted by the COVID-19. We're going to pray for our nation and for the church as a whole. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and grace. We thank you for how you blessed and kept us through yet another week. 
thank you for bringing us together for this time of worship. Father, we are asking that you will look on us today. Have mercy, Lord. Forgive us for our sins. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Father, we're asking today that you would bless our church family as we join together in worship. Be with us, O God. Be edified, be blessed by our worship. Be in every praise that we render unto you. Let it be acceptable in your sight. Father, bless as we hear the word of the Lord on today. Touch our hearts. Help us to be attentive to your word, that we would be hearers and doers of the word. Lord, be with us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's time to worship the Lord. Our music ministry is excited and anxious to come back into the house of the Lord and lead us together in worship. But today, we have a special video presentation featuring the voices of love. So please enjoy this footage, and we will be back to return for the furtherance of our service. do nothing without his glory hallelujah now we're gonna sing some church songs y'all ready yeah i like the old school stuff what you gonna put me in e flat all right all right well i love jesus he is my savior when storms are raging he is my shelter oh where he leads me well i will follow well i love jesus and he loves me help me say oh i love he is what with soul and where i will well i love jesus and he Come on, y'all. Well, I love Jesus. He is when so He is and where I will got to. I love Jesus and He loves me. Why don't you bless that wonderful name of Jesus? Why don't you bless that wonderful name of? Why don't you bless that wonderful name of There is love There is healing in the name of There is healing in the name of There is healing in the name of Oh no other name why don't you bless that wonderful name? Why don't you bless that wonderful name? Don't you bless that wonderful name? There is Well, I get joy when I think about 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 I get joy, 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 joy I get joy when I think about I get happy when I think about when I think about I get happy when I think about I get happy when I think about Oh, I get joy when I think about I get joy when I think about I get joy I get joy 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 I get joy, I get joy, I get joy, I get joy, 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 oh joy when I think about, I get joy when I think about, I 
get happy when I think about I get happy when I think about Put your hands together Well, what do you want the Lord to say? What y'all want him to say? That's all I want to hear. That's all. Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? All I want to hear is that what? Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? What I want to hear him say, thy word. What I want to hear him say, thy word. All I want to say, thy good. All I want to hear. Don't matter what nobody says. I just want to hear, well done, that word, well done, that word, well done, that word, well done, 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 well done. Good, well done, my good, well done, my good, well done, my good, well done, 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 well done. That's all you want to hear. You ain't worried about what nobody got to say about you. All I want to hear is well done. Oh, yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. Everlasting life, 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 everlasting life. Yes, I got it. 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 Do you have it? Do you have it? Do you have it? Do you have it? Everlasting life. 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 Put your hands together. Put your hands on it. If you live right, that old folks used to think holy people heaven belongs to you. Holy people heaven belongs to you. Holy people it belongs to you. Holy people it belongs to you. Yes, I've got it. Yes, I've got it. Yes, I've got it. Yes, I've got it. Yes, I have it. Yes, I have it. Yes, I have it. Yes, I have it. Do you have it? Do you have it? Do you have it? Do you have it? Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. 
everlasting life, an everlasting life, an everlasting life, an everlasting life. Yes, I've got it. 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 Yes, I have it. Yes, I have it. Better make sure you have it. Yes, I have it. Welcome to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. Here are your morning announcements for the week of July 26, 2020. This week, we celebrate the birthday of Elder George Twilley Jr. and Sister Taryn Winters. Happy birthday! All members are requested to participate in our nightly prayer assignments as we seek the Lord for healing, deliverance, and justice in our nation and for the world. We are in prayer each night from 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Prayer assignments are as follows. Mondays, last names beginning in A through E. Tuesdays, last names beginning in F through J. Wednesdays, last name beginning in K through O. Thursdays, last name beginning in P through T. Fridays, last names beginning in U through Z. And all members are asked to participate on Saturdays and Sundays. A private family life celebration service for Mother Helen Seaway will be held Tuesday, July 28th at 11 a.m. The service will be streamed live at www.facchurch.com. The homegoing celebration for District Elder Arthur G. Carney will be held Saturday, August the 1st at 11 a.m. The service will be streamed live on YouTube. Search for IAC Delaware to view the service. Please continue to pray for the bereaved families. Join the Men of Valor Ministry for their bi-monthly Men's Corner Meeting this Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. on Zoom. Please see your screen for additional details. The virtual summer convention of the Pentecostal Assembly of the World will be held July 29th through August 1st. Speakers will include Bishop Noel Jones, Pastor John Hanna, Evangelist Sandra Riley, Bishop Lambert Gates, and our presiding Bishop Theodore L. Brooks. Several auxiliaries will also feature daytime sessions, which will be hosted on Zoom. Visit www.pawinc.org for additional details. Please note, this week's Bible study session is canceled. All members are encouraged to support this week's convention programming. Join us next Sunday at 11 a.m. for Christian Education. Our weekly Sunday school lesson will be conducted on Zoom. Our worship celebration will begin at 12 noon. Services are streamed live each week on our website, YouTube, and Facebook. There is a word for you. Proverbs 9-11 says, For through wisdom, your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. The Jews for Christ Ladies Ministry is celebrating life free. Ladies, grab a piece of cake, ice cream, cupcakes, or your favorite snack and meet us on Zoom. Friday, August 21st at 7.30 p.m. for an evening of fellowship and fun. For additional updates during the week, please visit the church website at www.faithhopecharityministries.org or our social media pages. Please govern yourself accordingly and have a blessed week. Amen. We thank the Lord for our announcements. And again, we ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly. Before we move into our offering, we would like to invite you again to share today's service. In the comments section, why don't you tell us where you're watching from so that we can see those who are watching this service, even on Facebook and on YouTube. We are so glad, again, that you're taking this time to share with us in ministry. As we begin to worship the Lord in our giving, there are four ways for you to give today's, in today's offering. You can give on Cash App. You can find us using the hashtag dollar sign FHCM. On Givelify, using your phone or mobile device, on the Givelify app, you can search for Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. 
you can visit our website, www.faithhopecharityministries.org. Click on Make a Donation, and you can process your offering there using your Visa or MasterCard. Our last option is if you would like to mail or a check or a money order, you can send that to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries at 3804 Endicott Place, Springdale, Maryland, 20774. We thank you as you give unto the Lord. We're trusting God to restore it unto you 100-fold in Jesus' name. Well, as you complete your offering, it's my pleasure to introduce our pastor who shall come today to deliver this morning's message. So I ask that you would sit attentively as we hear the word of the Lord coming from our pastor and founder, District Elder George Twilley Sr. Let's receive him in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're grateful to the Lord for all that he is doing in our midst. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It's going to be a continuous praise. I will bless him. I'm going to bless his name because he's brought me from a mighty long way. And you too should give God praise. You too should take a pause right now and just say, Lord, I just want to thank you because you've been too good to me, too good to me for me not to take time out to say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Praise the Lord, faith, hope, and charity, and everyone that is here hearing me from the sound of my voice today through the airways. We are grateful to the Lord for having uh, this venue to be able to continue to minister to the people of God. We're thankful, Lord God, for how you continue to open up doors where there seem to be none. We're thankful for each and every one. We are grateful to our First Lady. Uh, we thank her today. We thank each one of our ministers and our deacons and our soon to be deacons. Uh, we're just ex excited about each and every one. Our praise team is ready to come back on board, as Elder said. So we're thanking the Lord right now for what he is doing. We're thanking him for what he is doing. I, I want to move right along with uh, our message today. I, I believe that the Lord ha has given us a word for the church for such a time as this. I, I'm, I'm calling upon each and every one to open up their hearts and to receive. Share this with someone. Share uh, your, your, uh, uh, your YouTube and your Facebook announcements with others to join in as we continue to minister through this venue. I want you to turn with me to the uh, 30 seventh chapter of Genesis, a very familiar uh, story, lesson that we have here today, uh, dealing with uh, Joseph and oh, Jacob and his family, but Joseph in particular, but 37th chapter and the first verse, and, and then I will go down and read the 19th verse. So 37 and 1, uh, 37 and 19, and 37 and 1, and it reads, and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, and in the land of Canaan. And in the 19th verse, it reads, And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Ah, okay. So and just in, in those uh, few words right there, a whole lot of stuff happened in the Bible uh, during this time. A whole lot of things happened in Joseph's life during this time. A and for a subject today, I, I want to uh, leave this with you. An unexpected detour. An unexpected expected detour, an unexpect, unexpected detour. So a detour is a long and roundabout route that is taken to avoid something or to visit somewhere along the way. It's going to take you a long way around the corner. There were many uh, uh, detours that we find that the people of God had gone through uh, as you continue to read and study your word. But today I want to deal with this dreamer, this dreamer. I, I, I also went back and I started looking and, and I didn't share these with uh, the ministers today to put up on the screen, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit because in that 19th verse, it, it said, and they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. Uh -huh. So what are they saying? So Joseph was a dreamer. Joseph was a dreamer of dreamers. And, and you, it, not only was he a dreamer, he kind of taunted his brothering and he even shared his dream with his parent and they didn't really like what they were hearing. So here we find that uh, Joseph uh, uh, continued to uh, uh, try to really not impress 
impress his brothers, but really get on their last nerve. You ever know if anybody get on your last nerve? Well, uh, uh, when you think about uh, between Joseph, uh, the life that he lived, he had a pretty good life. He was the chosen one. He was the one that his dad loved to the utmost. I, I, I know how it is to, to have someone really, really care for you and put you seems to be as number one. Now, I'm sure his father, Jacob, loved his other sons, but there was something special about Joseph. Ah, because of his mom? Yes, it was. He, he found that he had a special spot but because this was her son. This was her, one of her sons, and he definitely loved her so much that he cared about the offspring. So we find here that Joseph, he kind of lived off of that. He also lived off the fact that he, uh, his dad had kind of like put him out front with the coat of many colors and just showed him off. And, and look, that really got to his brother's last nerves. I'm talking about an unexpected detour. So, so when you look at Joseph, you would think he had a bed of roses. Things were going pretty good. You ever known anybody went from riches to rags? You, you ever known anybody that start, had everything going? So Joseph's dreams, the dreams that he shared with his brothers. Look at verse 5. It says, and Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brothers, and they hated him the more. And he said unto them, here I pray you. He started telling them. This is get on your last nerve when somebody starts telling you some things that you don't really want to hear and that you don't like. So he, he said, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. Say, for behold, we were binding our shaves in, in the field. And lo, my shelf arose and uh, also stood upright. And behold, your shelves, they stood around about and made ominous to my shelf. So they bowed down to his shelf. And the brethren didn't really like that. He said, so are you saying that we are going to bow down to you? Ah, <laughs> he said, I'm just telling the dream. Then he began to tell the dream to his dad. He said, you know, uh, I'm really sharing with you some things about this young man. He, did, he taunted his stuff and he walked his stuff and people didn't really receive it well. So he, he, he had this mindset because no one could argue the fact that uh, uh, Joseph was uh, anointed by God, that Joseph was called by God. Now, he didn't know his destiny at that time, but he knew there was something that God wanted him to do. Now, when you feel that the Lord has called you to do something, I want you to know that many times you're going to find yourself being at odds with others. And his brothers even said in this 19th verse that here he comes. And they are now setting their mindsets up to take him out. They want to kill him. Ah, I'm talking about an unexpected detour. Uh, one minute you're thinking about all the the things that you're about to do, then God is going to use you mightily. And you know that your destiny is to do far more than what you're doing. And you know that the hand of the Lord is on you. But then you find yourself being put in a pit. Ah, a pit. Yes, a pit. Ah, that not only a pit, now your whole continence has changed. Your whole attitude has changed. You are now a pitiful person. You are in the pit and you can't get out. Ah, Reuben came up with the idea. Let's 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 put him in the pit. Let's let's put him. Don't kill him. Let's put him in the pit. Uh, so he's really thinking that ah, I can come back later on and get him out. Ah, yes, 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 yes. But as he put him in the pit, it was dark. And just think about it, church. Just think about it. This 17 year old young man who probably had in his own mind everything going his way. Yes, I am the promised child to, to my dad. I'm, I'm all that in a bag of chips. My father is in love with me, and he, he definitely gives me the things that I need and I want. I don't even have to work like my brothers, like, and they, 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 they have issues with me, but I don't care because my dad likes what I'm doing. He, he loved me so much that he even put the coat upon me, which gave others a, an, an attitude or a mindset to know that he must be chosen. He must be the, the one. He is the favorite. Uh, look, somebody said favor is not fair, but sometimes favor will get you in trouble, and especially when you're a young person and you kind of use it to... to uh, tuck at people's coattails and upset them. 
So the brethren were upset, and they, they put him in the pit. And, and then there was one by the name of Judah. Judah, uh, he, he came up. He says, let's, let's, not, let's not do this. Let's, let's go get him up out and let's sell him. It's, it's better that we not kill him, but we sell him. And so I want you to know, and Judah means praise. So praise got him in. Reuben put him in, but praise brought him out. I'm telling you right now, you are going through some pitiful things in your life, but a praise will bring you out of every circumstances that you're going through. He'll do it, but you got to give God some glory. You got to magnify him and give him all the praise. So Joseph was chosen by God. Joseph was anointed by God. Joseph had a destiny given by God. Joseph was favored by God, not just by God, but even his son, his dad. I mean, he was favored by his own father, but his heavenly father put a favor upon him. But I'm talking about an unexpected detour where you think you're going on the right road and things are going to be all for your good. Now you find yourself at another crossword road. You find yourself in a pit. It's a, a pit. It's a detour from reaching your destiny. You're not reaching the spot that you've already been bragging about where you, you said that they're going to be bowed down to you, but you're not reaching that spot. Now you're on a detour. And let me tell you, a detour, and I, I, I was funny. I was running Saturday morning, and on my way uh, home after running and jogging, uh, I, I ran on a, I got on a road, and the road had detour signs. And I started thinking about how God was speaking to me, that showing me all these detour signs. And so when you're going down a detour sign or going on a detour road, there's some unexpected things, some things that you don't even know, especially if you have never traveled that road. There are things that can happen. There are things that, that you're not aware of. You're kind of suspicious about the way to drive through the road. Here, the construction workers may have put the road together, and you got your car. You really don't want to go through this ditch and go through that way. There's supposed to be something to help you get to your destination, but sometimes the detour it's going to slow you down. Sometimes the detour is going to make you do things that you weren't really ready to do. Sometimes the detour will make you pray more. Sometimes your, your, your navigation system won't pick up the new road that the detour has taken you to. It can mess up your whole mindset. So De Joseph now is on a detour. He's no longer heading for his destiny, so he thinks. He is now in the midst of a pit. How in the world can I get out of this? Why did my brothers? You've been detoured. It's just a detour. Don't faint. Don't fall out. Because there are going to be far more detours in your life. There are going to be far more things that are going to turn you from the way you were going. Ah, the children of Israel, even when they left Egypt, we find they could have gone a shortcut gone right to the Philistine, but the Bible says the Lord didn't see that to be the best route for them to go because when they see, would see the war going on or the, uh, the, the uh, fighting material that the Philistines had, it would put them in, and they would ran back to Egypt. So he detoured them. He said, ah, the Red Sea, it's a detour. Go this route. But God was with them throughout. I'm telling you today, church, People are not really understanding what God will do in your life. So from that one detour, it will lead to another. So Joseph then, after getting up out of the pit, getting up out of that dungeon, and he's now being sold, and he's sold into Egypt. And the, the here he is now with Potom. And so he's still uh, a, a young man, not knowing which way to go. I, I can tell you, sometimes when you're young and you think you've made the right move, that he did not say he made the right move, but even for, I'm trying to show you that we sometimes think we make the right move, and it's not the right move. I can recall when I joined them service, uh, I wasn't 17, <laughs> But I was, really didn't know what I was doing. I, I had a vision that I wanted to go and travel and see the world. But I didn't really understand the consequences with, with, with that all meant. I didn't understand that the boot camp life. I didn't know I was going to have to, yes, sir, and get up at 6. I didn't 
I didn't weigh the cost. I didn't know everything. Well, as a young man, he still didn't know everything, but all he knew that he was now a servant to somebody else. Before he was on top, his dad loved him. His brothers had an issue with him, but his dad loved him. So he was on top and destined to be ahead of his household, destined in his own mind. My brothers, that's what the dream said. They're going to bow down. The dream also for his parents said the sun and the moon and the 11 stars, they're going to bow down to you. So here he is thinking that I got it all going on. I'm going to be on top. But now, after the pit, that didn't take me out. I had another detour. I'm now a servant to Potter. Potter, I'm a servant. I'm used to having people wait on me. But now I'm waiting on someone else. But I tell you once again that the Lord was with him. It's just a detour. It won't kill you. Just take the road and go down. So he goes down, and he's now in the home of Potiphar. Now, look, I'm going to tell you, that's not the only deta- uh, detour that Joseph is going to face. Because look what happened. He's there, and he's working diligently for him. Potiphar loves to see what he's doing. He loves the bookwork. He loves because everything that he had that Joseph touched increased. And if Joseph increased, Potiphar increased. So Potiphar gave him control of his whole household. Everything that I have except my wife. Except you can't have it. That's, you can have, you're in control. Take care of my books. I trust you. Ah, but another detour is down the road. Because his wife, she wanted him. She wanted him not for the book work. She wanted him for something totally different. She says, sleep with me. But he denied her. He wouldn't do it. And because of that, There was another detour. One day he was in front of her and she grabbed his coat and she kept it because he had turned her down so many times. And now we find that she told her husband and he didn't like it. And so now Joseph has another detour. He's now in prison. Come on, talk to me, church. From one thing, I'm talking about a person that had everything going in the right direction. Everything that he thought was going in the right direction. Hey, I, that my dream tells me that y'all are going to be bowing down to me. I believe the dream that I had. I believe what God is telling me. And I'm telling you, so all I see is great things in my life. But now it turns from the pit. He rises up again because he's in control of part of his house. From that pit, he runs into another pit that's called prison. Another pit that's called prison. An unexpected detour. He didn't, uh, he wasn't considering all this. He says things are going pretty good. As a servant for Potiphar, that's okay. It's not that bad. I, I got, I'm in control of stuff. I got, I'm eat, eating good. I, I have nice clothes. I kind of control the household. It's a pretty good life. But then... The enemy, he's not going to let you be peaceful in that. And we find that he's, he's going down another detour road. God will send you down these roads because he's going to take you to a place where you're going to fulfill your destiny. You're not going to understand it. But you've got to trust the Lord enough to know that you've got to go because it's just an unexpected detour. You have to go down that road with your head lifted up. And you have to get to a point where you really only trust God because it's only God that's going to get you up out of this. So he's in prison. (laughs) Favor, once again, the jailer found favor in Joseph. Here he gives Joseph a position where he's over all the prisoners. He's the next man. So things are still going pretty good. Yes, I'm down one minute, but I work. God has got his hand on me. I'm back at a level where I can deal with this. So now the jailer has turned things over to Joseph. And Joseph, I'll tell you how God works things out. He's in a special prison. (laughs) He's in the presidential prison because 
the people that are there with him are people that, that are of authority or were of, uh, uh, tied to authority. He had uh, 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 the, 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 the cup bearer, and, and he also had the baker there. These were from the royal house. And, and they were there, and they began to share with Joseph their dreams. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> Joseph messed up a long time ago probably when he began to tell his brother his dreams. You can't tell everybody your dreams because everybody can't handle it. We see that in his family. Now, I, I really must track back a little bit and tell you, that family, Jacob's family, was really a dysfunctional family. Uh, and you can see it uh, through the, the acts that each and every one of them were going through. The brothers hating their brothers. And the one that's uh, even uh, as bad as uh, we might want to say uh, the younger one was acting, uh, he wasn't that bad. But, but we always have some things that we really have to look back. It was a dysfunctional family. And through you, when you start reading uh, about Jacob and you start reading about Judah, huh, and, and, and Simeon and Levi started reading uh, their lives and how they went about doing things. It, it wasn't appropriate. It wasn't appropriate. So we find that even in the prison, Joseph finds favor. He shares, the cupbearer shares his dream. The baker shares his dream and Joseph interprets the dreams. <laughs> he tells the cupbearer that in three days, you're going to be restored to your position. <laughs> that was a good thing. But he tells the baker, in three days, you're going to be hung. These things came into fruition. And Joseph told the cupbearer just one thing. He says, when you get back, remember me. Tell Pharaoh about me. Help me get up out of jail. So he was feeling pretty good about that. You know, when you help somebody, you, you think things are going to go pretty good for you. You said, I did a good deed. And, and, and they really appreciated it. So I, I'm looking for them to turn this around and do me a favor because, really, I don't belong here. I, I really don't think I belong here because uh, part of it, because he could have taken me out. He could have killed me. But I think he knew a little bit about his wife, too. Now, that didn't say that in the Scripture, but I believe he knew she must have done something because he knew the character of Joseph. I mean, Joseph did everything to make his house grow. The jailer saw him do everything to help him out. I'm going to tell you, when you know you got good people working for you, somebody will come in and try to throw a wrench or a rock at it, and you really have reservations. Now, but he had to, part of it had to respect what his wife said. He had to act upon it, but I believe he put him in one of those high-priced prisons where he could, you know, had, they had TV. I'm just kidding. Had the things that uh, 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 the, the norm didn't have. It wasn't in the general population. Let's put it like that. He, and so he, he took care of things. So he, when, he, when the uh, cupbearer uh, went back uh, to his job, he told him, said, remember me. Well, time passed. Time passed. If you go back and you look at the scriptures, uh, Joseph was 17. Uh, it, it was, he was 28 when he went to, to jail. Look all the time that has passed from when he had the dream of prosperity and the dream that he's going to be all that in a bag of chips. He, when he had that dream that he was going to be, uh, uh, his family was going to bow down and that he would be head, when he had that dream, 11 years had passed. That was a long detour. That was a long road to go down. There were ups and downs and hills to climb, and, but he's still standing. And now he thinks he's got another way out of some of the predicaments he's in, and he's t helped uh, the cupbearer by sharing with him what was going to happen. He said, I got one on my side. So he, cupbearer says, okay, thumbs up. But two years passed. He forgot all about it. How quick, 
How quick we forget about how somebody helps us. How quick do we turn a deaf ear? And it wasn't until he overheard, this is the cup here, overheard the dream that Pharaoh had. And when he heard, he began, and he went to him and he says, well, let's take a step back, because this is the crazy part. The dream, dealing with the seven years, he shared it. He said, go get me, all the magicians, all the wise men. Let me tell them my dream. They got to figure this out. How do you many know that unless the Lord opens up your eyes, we can go and we can investigate, look for all the vaccines that we want for COVID-19 until the Lord opens up their eyes. It's going to be futile. <laughs> so they go and they get them. They get to the point they say, we cannot answer. We have no answer for your dream. The cupbearer says, I know a man. I sh he shares with him what Joseph had shared with him about his dream. Pharaoh tells him, go get him. He brings him and he shares the dream with him. And the seven years of prosperity and the seven years. Man, not only did the Pharaoh like what he was hearing, he even liked the suggestions or the recommendations that Joseph gave him and how to make it work. So he put Joseph over top of everything. He says, beyond me, there's no one greater in Egypt than you. And he gave him his ring. He had clout again. I'm talking to go from rags to riches. It was just an unexpected detour. But look how many years, how many of us have been going through a detour in our life where we haven't been willing to listen to the Lord and accept the things that he was knocking aside our head, but we kept turning our back. How many of us Gave a deaf ear to what the Lord was trying to do to us in our lives. God has created each and every one of us for a purpose. And he's trying to get our attention. And sometimes we forget the road that we should be going down. So to get your attention, he takes you off of the road of all good and happiness. And he puts you on a detour. Because I'm trying to help you get your mind right. I'm trying to help you to get things together so that you can help somebody. Look, look what Joseph was doing. His ultimate goal was to bring salvation to his family and to a hall, to provide food and substance for a nation of people. His destiny was to do far more than he even imagined. But if he had not gone through the pitfalls that he went through, None of that would have happened. Not that way. God would have used another vessel. Yes. But God had chosen Joseph because of his demeanor, because he was the equipped one that could do it. God gives us the ability to do great things. He tells you and tells me that we are more than conquerors, that we can do all things through him. Sometimes we're going to run into a rough spot in life. But you got to get up, shake yourself, and keep moving. You can't allow the pit to keep you down. Look, I'm telling you, if Judah got his brother up out of the pit, if praise brought him up out of the pit, why don't you start praising him right now while we're going through this pitiful time that we're going through? Yes, give him some glory. God's about to do a great thing. It's going to blow minds. God did it. God knows what he's doing. God is the answer to all our problems. He created the moon, the stars, and everything that we see. He created, he allowed things to happen in our life just to get our attention. Because that's the kind of God we serve. I'm going to tell you right now, he don't want you to stay in the pit. He don't want you to stay in the dungeon. He don't want you to stay in prison. Why? Because dreams die in pits. 
ministries die in prisons. Why? Because, <coughs> excuse me, your gifts, they die when you're not exercising the things that God has called you to do. This is the day and time when we as a church must wake up and know that God has a purpose for each and every one of us. And his plan is for us to go out to the highways and byways and compel dying men and women everywhere, letting them know what they must do to be saved. It's not something that we should hold for ourselves. You've been destined to do this. You water baptized believers. And God continues to show us how grateful he is by letting them know it's just an unexpected detour. It's not here to kill you. It's not to take you out. It's just an unexpected detour. And even it took time for Joseph to deal with his brethren. You know, he tested them. People say he wasn't forgiving, but he tested them. He kept sending them back, kept sending them back, he brought them back. But, you know, God will do whatever he has to do to bring about a point of repentance to people. His brethren didn't even know who Joseph was when they came to the palace to, to get their, their meal or their, uh, the, the substance. They didn't recognize him. The thing about it, Joseph noticed them. He knew them. He saw it. It hurt him. He had to go back and he had to really get himself together even just to address them. Well, let me tell you how to think God works things out. It took time for him to shake himself. It took time for, the pe for his brethren to really understand that forgiveness is of God. Repentance is of, you got to repent. They had to give themselves over and really acknowledge the fact that they messed up. That's a hard thing for us to do today. He says, what you did, you did it for evil, but God, oh, Lord, have mercy. But God, <laughs> he meant it for good. And because God meant it for good, that changes the whole equation. He meant it for good. He meant it for good. We often give people too much credit. Yes, what Joseph did to his brothers, it was horrible. It was wrong. But even though their sinful actions, God was orchestrating something bigger than they were. They had a small scale of evil intentions, but God, he overrode that. They're evil for eternal good. Ah, Joseph recognized that the detours of his life were part of God's provident plan. The detours that he went down was a part of God's plan to make sure substance was available for his family and for the people of God. God did it. He knew what he had to do. And look, just because Egypt grew, the people of God, they also grew. They also survived. The plan, God knew the plan. But he had to send Joseph down a different route because the route that he was taking was going to kill him. The route that he was going to take was taken was going to destroy him because he hadn't learned how to entertain the gift that God had given him. So sometimes we have to wait it out. God does things totally different than we do. We have to get to a point where we can just rely and trust on him. Even when things aren't going the way we want. Job, 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 Job. He had a rough, rough span of life. He's praying. His children are playing. They're celebrating birthdays and things of that nature, and he's still praying for them. And calamity happens. Lives are lost. Material good, goods are lost. Livestock are lost. Job lost everything. But one thing the Bible says, he maintained his integrity. He trusted the Lord. And even with people trying to distract him. Because that's what this is. When you're going down a detour, it's a distraction. 
I, I don't know anybody like to take detour roads. I just don't know anybody. You sit there, you notice that now I was going the shortest route that I know. And now it's putting me on a road that I don't know. And I'm pretty sure it's going to slow me up. It might get me to my destination if I follow and catch the signs and read everything that I'm supposed to. But suppose I miss a turn. If I miss a turn, I'm in a worse predicament than I was before. But some of us, we won't follow the detours the, or the signs to, to get to glory. We won't follow the signs that God or the pattern that God has put out there. We are going to do it our own way. But you got to do it God's way. And how could he possibly respond with, with anger, knowing that he was doing all this for his brothers? Because he was torn between two lovers at one, one point in time. It hurt him that his brothers had done that to him, had thrown him in the pit, had taken away some 13 years of his life, 13 years away from his brother Benjamin, 13 years away from his dad who loved him dearly. Can you imagine his dad, his mindset after losing his child? You ever thought about that? I mean, when I talk about detours, there there's so many distractions that we have. Losing a loved one is a distraction. Hello, somebody. Uh, the season that we're in, people are losing loved ones, and they're not even having the opportunity to say, I love you, or bye, or, or not, not saying a word because it's, they're gone. It's a detour. It's a distraction. But God is telling you right now, everyone by the sound of my voice, don't fall out. Don't faint. Know your destiny. Know where God wants you to go. And what God is telling you right now, he wants you to be a, a, a child of God, working in the kingdom, doing those things that he's called. First of all, is being sharing this great gospel with your, your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers, people that you come into contact with, doing good things. Sometimes that's going to put you out of your normal track. But that's okay. It's just an unexpected detour. It's just a road that you're going to to get to glory. I don't know about you, but I'm trying to make heaven my home. And if it means going down to the left when I think I should be going straight, but God has a plan for me. When God tells you to move, it's time to move. The children of Israel, again, if they had gone to the Philistines and the shortcut out of Egypt, no doubt they would have turned about face and they would have ran back to Egypt. And they would have had the same comments you would say, well, Egypt ain't that bad. Huh. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. So he had to send them an unexpected detour. And that route, as fearful as it was, because all I see is water. How in the world am I going to get across this big pile of water? Ah, God told him in his word to use what you have. Use it. And the water is separated. But I love how God ends things. That group that's chasing you, the Egyptians, the ones that are giving you that hard time. He says, them, you will never see them again. God removes obstacles out of your life in order for you to fulfill your destiny. Somebody ought to be shouting right now. God, God is moving things out of your life. Issues. Things that are trying to bring you down. He's removing them right now. But you got to go down this unexpected detoured road. You can't go the way you think you should go, the way you want to go. You have to go a different route. And the route that he's taking you, it's going to take some time. It's not a shortcut, but it's the best cut. It's the way that you should go in order to fulfill your destiny. Church, I'm just letting you know today that there are going to be unexpected detours in your life. 
and I don't want you to be threatened by it. I want you to go through them with your heads high and with a mindset that know that you can do all things through Christ, that God has you in the palm of his hand. You have to lean on him and depend on him. You can't lean on your own understanding, but lean on his, the, his word. If God said it, that settles it. It's an unexpected detour. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And church, don't give up the fight. Continue down the road that God sends you. God has called us in these last days to be leaders, to be examples, and to be children of God. That means we have to obey him in everything that we do, even though it may hurt, even when we don't understand it, even when we're in the midst of a dark, dark pit. Our finances, dark pit. Our health could be a darker pit. All these things are to distract us, but it's just a detour from where God wants to show us something. If he's the healer that we know, whatever your sickness that you have, he can relieve you of it. He can do it. Just speak the word. That's what the centurion said. I'm a man of authority. You don't have to come. Just speak the word. Oh, that's powerful. That's faith, believing that God has your back, that he made you a promise, and that he's taking you through. God bless you once again. And at this time, we'll turn the service back into the hands of Elder George for final remote closing and all the altar call. Amen. We're grateful for the word of the Lord that we received today from our pastor, Unexpected Detours. We bless God for giving us that bit of information as we continue in our walk with him. Many times as we go through the walk of life, we have our own plans and expectations of how life should go. But when things go against our way, we often become confused and frazzled. The scripture says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end that of that way leads to death. But thank God that we know that he has a way that's mighty sweet. He knows the road. He'll even bear the load. So we're grateful to know that he is the God of the unexpected detour. So after hearing the word of the Lord today, we would like to extend an invitation to you. Maybe you've not known the Lord in the pardoning of your sins. Maybe you've not been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you have not received the infilling of the gift of the Holy Ghost. We've got a detour for you on this morning. You can be saved today. You can receive the spirit of the Lord today. You can be baptized even today. We'll make it happen. You can reach the church at 240-334-0121. Again, that's 240-334-0121. We will pray with you. We will counsel you, and you, we will show you through the word of the Lord God's plan of salvation that's made just for you. If you have a prayer request, you can also email the church. You can send it to Faith Hope Charity Ministries at Verizon.net. Again, that's Faith Hope Charity Ministries at Verizon.net. We are ready to pray with you. We are ready to believe God with you that God can bring the change that you would like to see in your life. He is the God of the unexpected detours. We're going to close out in prayer tonight, this afternoon. We again thank you for sharing with us in this morning's worship service. And again, we pray that you were encouraged by the word of the Lord. Please take note of our prayer schedule for this week. Also remember that the men will have their meeting on this Tuesday evening. And then there will be no service for us Wednesday evening as we will be in support of the PAW Summer Virtual Convention Wednesday through Saturday. But again, let's talk to the Lord after hearing the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy. We again thank you for the word that you have spoken to us. We thank you for our pastor who shared with us through the scriptures about your unexpected detours. 
Father, we pray for those of us who are going through life. As we journey through this path of life, Lord, you direct every step. You navigate our way. You order our steps and you direct our path. Father, we're asking you that you would show us and that you would instruct us through your word. Give us understanding. Give us clarity. Give us certainty on the way that we should go. Father, we pray for those who are on the path of a detour. Lord, you know the frustration. Lord, you know the confusion. Lord, you know the discouragement that can come to our hearts and our minds. But Father, I pray that you would send peace. Father, I pray that you would send comfort and assurance. Help us to know that you are the God of the unexpected. You are the God of the detour. You order our path. You compass our way. You pilot our path. Lord, we'll submit to your hand. We'll submit to your spirit's guide. We'll say yes, we'll trust you, and we'll obey. Father, we pray for those who have not yet received you and the saving of their souls. Father, I pray that you would touch their hearts and their minds, that you would cause them to cry out, what must I do to be saved? Father, lead some soul to repentance on today. Let a soul be baptized in your name today. Lord, fill someone with the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Remember those who are sick and afflicted. Bless us as we go through this week. Protect us and keep us in your care. We proclaim all these blessings in the name of Jesus. Now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And everyone says, Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.